Hi there, welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. Hey, come right on in. This is a special, special program, and I hope it'll bring a lot of good memories to you and help you appreciate more your daddy. We're going to talk about Father's Day today. Aren't you thankful that we live in a country that takes a day to acknowledge fathers? And let me say this. Do as much for your daddy as you do for your mother on Mother's Day, okay? That's really what we ought to do. It's going to be a good program. I got a couple of your good friends on. That's Stephanie and Wanda. And they're going to be cooking for us today. Uh, we kind of talked about what do our daddies like to eat. And Stephanie said her dad liked banana bread. And so we're going to make some of that. And uh, she happens to be in the kitchen right now with Wanda. And they're getting ready to stir up some sloppy joes. So it's going to be a great program. And I want to get over to the kitchen right away. But first, let's talk about this wonderful book we've offered you before. And when they're gone, they're going to be gone. Uh, the Red Letter Words of Jesus. I, I love just kind of leafing through this book and looking at the wonderful things that he had to say. And the information is on your screen. You can use your 800 number or you can use the address that's on your screen. And we'll be glad to get these uh, books right out to you. Um, if you're like Stephanie, you Christmas shop all year long. So you might be thinking about that when you place your order. Right now, though, we're going to go in the kitchen and uh, watch Wanda and Stephanie stir up some great sloppy joes. So here we are in the kitchen stirring up some great sloppy joes. <laughs> now, we had another sloppy joe recipe before, and it had tomato soup in it. Let me give you this. Mm. But this one is so much more like the one I make at home. Mm -hmm. So I think you're going to like this one. So we have ground beef. We have a quarter cup of onion. Yes, ma'am. We have a quarter cup of green, green pepper. pepper. Yum. So everyone knows I am not tasting this, but Wanda will. <laughs> And then I have three quarter cup of ketchup. I have three tablespoons of brown sugar. Thank you so much. Which is now I use a lot more of all of this at home, so I really do too. it's to your taste. Okay, exactly. we have a tablespoon of prepared mustard, which I use a whole lot more mustard. Yeah. And then we have garlic powder, and we have salt and pepper to taste. So you're going to just put this all in your pan. And I'm going to add a little bit of water, too, because that ketchup is thick. And you really want this to bubble up and just all these flavors to marry together. Now, here's Wanda's tip. Okay, so you put this all together, and you just throw it in the crock pot. I do, right? because I have friends that were moving one time and um, into our building. So I just put it in the crock pot on low, so I mm -hmm. think it needs more. Yeah, we need more of everything. Yeah. <laughs> Needs more ketchup. I think that was more than a pound of hamburger was the was why. Yeah. You can add a little bit of water to it, and then you can just let it bubble up, and just let it, the you know the water simmer down so all these flavors can come together. You're yep. gonna want to saute those onions and those green peppers probably a little bit longer too, unless you like a good crunch to your to your sloppy joes. I'm just saying. Yes, please add. I just can't <laughs> stand it. Just, this so, is what you do at home, though. This yeah. is cooking at home. You just, yeah. you know, continually uh, add to your flavor, to your, to, to your taste. And when you put it in the crock pot on low for a couple hours, you know, you can take it to a neighbor, and while they're unpacking whatever, I love that. That is so good because we don't do that en enough anymore. Like no, we had somebody move we into don't. our neighborhood, and I took them like a fruit tray and a vegetable tray, and they were shocked <laughs> because they no, you know, nobody yeah, expects nobody does that it. anymore. So. Do that. Invite your, you Whoops. know. Oh, hey. <laughs> hey, I'm just going to bless y'all a little bit. You know, but it'll be good. People moving into your neighborhood, make them something. Make them yes. some banana bread. Make them some rolls. Make them something. And take it over to them and welcome them to the neighborhood. We need to get back to basics. Well, being friendly would be nice. The basics be neighborly. Of being friendly, yeah. <laughs> You know, it's like nobody thinks to do this for your neighbors. In fact, nobody knows your neighbors anymore. I've been in my neighborhood 17 years. Do you know and anybody? I still don't know a, a lot oh, of my wow. neighbors. Wow. I mean, we've tried. We're working on it. But it's like almost that they're closed yeah. off. Yeah. Like, you know, we don't want to get to know you. Right. We're nice people. We'll, we'll, we'll be nice to you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so this is looking really yummy. Yep. You put a lot of um, brown sugar. I'm just going to add a little bit more water to temper that. <laughs> can. I'll let you. So you just let it bubble up. And let it cook simmer on your stove if you're going to do a that. because you time. Yeah, because you know your brown sugar has that molasses in it and it'll turn darker, but it is so good. Yes. As a matter of fact, my children um, love this over. So do you mind trying it since I'm not gonna? Mm. A little, little taste? Here, how about if I just put a fork? 
How about if you just taste it with a fork? Will you do that? <laughs> Whatever so, seeps through, praise Jesus. There you go. Just well, a I'm just taste. gonna do the meat part. Yeah. Because I won't eat the bread. No, no bread. And I don't like onions unless oh. it's <laughs> thoroughly cooked. We are terrible. <laughs> she doesn't like green pepper. I, I don't like somebody onions. else over here. <laughs> mm. It's so good, right? Yeah. It just needs to cook some more. Yeah, let it cook. Let it cook the for a peppers. while. Let the flavors marry. Yep, there you go. If you want this recipe, all of the information is going to be on the screen. Wanda will email it to you. That's mm -hmm. usually the best way, but if not, get the information off the screen, the address, and uh, we'll be back with you. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. All right, we're talking about fathers today, and this is one of your daddy's favorite recipes. Yeah, right? I have a picture to share. Uh -huh. We're talking about dads. There's my dad. And I have met him, and he's yeah. such a nice dad. When I go up there, I try to take them places, and we went to Alabama that day, and I just we were stopped at a rest area, so I was like, let's get a selfie. <laughs> you're, you're so good at the selfies, and I must say that um, there's a lot of good parents in the world, but this is a good daughter. Oh, stop. Really, you're, you're so attentive to your parents, <laughs> and that's the way it should be. Yes, of course. Congratulations. Oh, well, for all they've done for me, mm -hmm. this is the least I can do. Mm -hmm. Are you kidding me? Okay, so we have three bananas, mm -hmm. okay? These aren't super ripe, but that's okay because once you start mashing them up, they're fine. If you can't find ripe bananas or you don't have ripe mm -hmm. bananas. Now, let me tell you, if you have bananas at home and they're getting too ripe, take, open them up, put them in a baggie, and put them in the freezer because you can use them later for smoothies or for banana bread. And they're good um, when you do that young shake. shake you know? yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So yeah. don't throw bananas away. Freeze them. Okay, and I'm mixing together this you have, baking powder. Yep, you have a cup and a half of flour and a teaspoon of baking soda. And you're just mixing those up, and I'm just getting these all this one is, uh This one is quite plain, and... Excuse me. I didn't say that. <laughs> you just, just, just tell me to do it? No, I said the baking soda, not the salt. Oh, well, I, I did both. <laughs> she I, did both. It's fine. I just followed directions. I, yeah. Um, I don't take directions too well at this age. After you have eight grandchildren, Sorry. <laughs> you're on your own. Okay, it calls for a cup of sugar. We we did three quarter cup because you don't you we, don't need don't. that much sugar. Okay, and a one egg, lightly beaten. Well, also uh, this is a, a rather plain recipe, but there's a lot of it's things you can add good. to it. A quarter cup of melted butter that it's so cold in here that the butter has solidified. <laughs> Well, tell me, do you have any outstanding memory of your dad today? You know, I You're remember, fortunate he's still here. I am so very fortunate. You know, I remember in Cedar Lake, Indiana, I was five years old. My dad would get up and he would take us fishing. And I now, now I know he was tired. He worked in the steel mills. And back then, I'm five. I don't know this. I, now I'm a mom and I work and I know. He used to get up and take me and my brother Sean fishing at Cedar Lake, Indiana, and I remember it vividly. Well, also, I think there are not that many girls who fished with their dad. Mm -hmm. That's that's fabulous. Yeah, oh, I love doing stuff like that. Okay, so I'm going to mix the dry, mm -hmm. the wet and the dry together. You sprayed the pan, right? Mm -hmm. And you sprayed it over the sink, right? Because I missed it. I did. I sprayed it over the sink because she cares about me and she doesn't want me to get it on the floor and then fall on it. True story. So. And I used to say, you know, if you fall, I'll laugh first and then I'll make sure you're okay. And then I fell and I biffed it in <laughs> the studio on a cement floor face first. And I swore I, I would never say laugh. that to anybody. I shouldn't laugh. I, no, I That's laughed when now. Phil Driscoll came in and prayed for it. It was Phil Driscoll, Bob DeAndre, Rick Wolf, all standing there. I'm coming through <laughs> with two plates of food, and there's a cord stretched across the thing, and I didn't see it. The food went flying. I went face first onto a concrete <laughs> floor. I thought I broke my knee. I thought I broke my nose, and, and I teeth? thought I broke my teeth. I am not kidding. But it was an awful fall. It was awful, but I'll tell you what did happen, and now I know why people get like Botox and stuff, <laughs> because my lip swelled up just a little bit, enough to take all the wrinkles out. And I was like, okay, now I see why people do this, because this looks kind of nice. 
could, could we get Botox for, yeah. for a, an advertiser on the yeah. show, you think? Yeah, so so the, yeah, so I won't ever say if you fall, that, I'll laugh first. Yeah, I will make sure you're okay first, and then I might laugh. I would say there was a little bit of a miracle in there, because that was an awful fall. It's concrete floor. I walked up the stairs and didn't remember it. I kind of can't, I didn't pass out, but I kind of came to sitting at my desk, like, what just happened? Yeah. But also, I, I just feel compelled to say, you know we have a lot of cords around here on the floor. It was across the walkway. The floor is black and the cord <laughs> is black. I don't know what you want me to say. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna take a put bite this in this. a loaf pan and you bake it for a long time, like an hour. Oh, man. Yeah. That's good. good. It's right? still warm. Yeah. It's awesome. It takes a long time, so make sure you keep doing the toothpick thing because you'll know when it's done. Listen, girl, as simple as that is. It's delicious. Unusually good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Unusually good. Yep. You could cut back the sugar even more because cut with the bananas. All right. If you want this recipe, and my mother good. said don't ever talk when you got food in your mouth, uh, the information's coming up on your screen, and then you're going to be interested to see what... Wanda has to say about a really good stepfather. It's going to be a good story. Stay with us. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. Well, uh, this lady you love so much, and she has been with me 18 years, right? And um, in the beginning, she cooked with me all the time, and then things got a little bit too hairy. You had a couple of physical problems mm -hmm. and, and all. But I was beating my head against the wall as uh, to what to do with this program, really. And then I thought of your husband. And... I've never heard a story like it. The fact that he had never been married, he's about 50 years old. Right. And he falls in love with you. Yep. And you have two teenage boys. Yes. <laughs> uh, and what he became in their lives. I just want you to take it from there. Well, before we actually got married, my youngest son moved in with him. And I said, you don't want to do that because you won't end up married <laughs> me in the end. Oh, he lived with Bill before you he all did, got married. did, before we got married. And Bill said, I'll try. I can handle him. Don't worry. I can, I'm like, but he's got, you know, I can handle him. So, um, well, we got married. And in fact, I think if you show the one picture of my husband. Let, let's take a our, look at the pictures. We can, and it'll, we can, and then we can talk about yeah, him. Okay. That was him on our wedding day. He looks like a happy man. And here he is with my older son, uh, my son graduating from college. And look at the pride in Bill's... Oh, he's happy. Yeah. He, he, and, he and my son just loved each other. Uh -huh. Absolutely loved each other. And here we are um, there on our wedding day. And, and how long were you married before he went to heaven? Fifteen years. Fifteen and, years. And uh, Wanda had come out of a really difficult situation and... There, there's the picture I remember of yes. uh, Bill Bascom, and I, I just have to say, before the program's over, he's one of the finest men I've ever met in my life. He loved the Lord, he loved people, yep. and uh, he left us too soon. But he did. We wanted you to see the pictures, and this man became a father overnight of two teenage boys, and right. he had no experience being a dad. Right. And I think one of the first memorable things that happened within six months of us being married, he comes to me and says, uh, there's a problem. I said, well, what's the problem? Well, my youngest son did this and this and this. I won't rat on him because he might hear this. <laughs> he wouldn't be too happy with his mother. But um, he said, when he comes home, I don't care what time it is, uh, he's going to have to pack his bags and leave. And you have to understand it was just me and the boys, so it's like the three musketeers. Mm -hmm. We were always together. I was always protecting them, and probably too much in the wrong way. Too. And now the stranger. <laughs> and now he comes in, and he's telling me that my son is going to have to leave the house and find, an, and he can never come back here and live with us again. Well, I'm crying. Mm -hmm. You can't do that. I said, 
I, I can't watch you do this. Why? Please change your mind. And because I knew that my youngest had some anger issues, and I'm thinking he's going to get in that car and drive like a maniac and get killed, and then I'll lose my son, and I'll blame you forever. <laughs> so it was just like one of those things. He said no. And one of the things he said to me, he said, listen to me. Your boys don't know what it's like to deal with someone who can discipline them and love them at the same time. They've never learned that. They've only learned discipline and not even in the right way. Mm -hmm. So from there. So I, I said, I'm just going to go to my room and I'm going to stay there and I'm going to cry. So I did. I cried in my room. I heard Brant come and I heard Bill tell him and I knew Brant left. I didn't hear from him for four days. I was panicked. I thought he's probably dead. He's probably dead. They don't know where his parent is. <laughs> and so I get this call on the phone, and it was my son. And he goes, Mom, I'm like, well, where are you? Where are you living? Are you okay? Are you eating? Do you need some money? See, I'm, I'm used to doing mm -hmm. all of that. Sister enabler, like all of women oh, my goodness. tend to be. Well, I think, I hate to say it, but as a parent, you love your child. You want to do the best you can do. And I've just been so used to protecting, I didn't see the side of the enabling. I really didn't. So he goes, Mom, let me just stop you right there. He said, Papa did what was right. And I'm like, he did? <laughs> really? <laughs> I, was like, I was like shocked. He did? And um, he, he said, yes. He said, I was wrong. I was doing things that was wrong. He never did move in with us after that. Not, not ever. No matter how hard things got, Bill said, you need to let him learn this lesson. And I'm like, how do you do that when you, everything within you wants to do the opposite? And today he's uh, wonderful. Doing very well. Doing very well and has a child and is a wonderful father. Um, yep. So many times step parents get a bad, bad rap and they certainly do not all act as they should. It's, it's a dicey very situation. Very so. But I have to say, knowing her 18 years and watching how much the boys and the boys' wives loved Bill. Bill was yeah. the, the rock. He was, and the grandchildren. Oh, my. Yeah. The grandchildren. Um, it was like he stepped in, and he wasn't a step. He was a father. He really, truly was, because even though the children had a biological father, he wasn't a father to them. Mm -hmm. He wasn't a friend. And Bill could be a friend of a friend, and he could be firm to the point, so you learned your lesson, but they always came back and there was always open arms of love. My husband was always loving to them, even though he had to be stern. And there were times he was stern with me, and I'm like, I'm not one of your employees. Don't you treat me that way. I am your wife. <laughs> but he, he truly was. Um, he was amazing with the boys. From what you've told me, and I didn't know you when he came into the family, but there was almost an immediate appreciation for him. He must have had the kind of personality that he could engage, I would say, young boys, young men who probably very suspicious, wondering what's going on because they're very close to their mom. Right. Well, both my boys interrogated him before. <laughs> before uh -huh. says you're not you're not going to be with my mom we need to find out some information about you mm -hmm. and they'd call me up on the phone mom he's really a good guy we couldn't find anything really <laughs> bad about him mm -hmm. and but no bill is extremely engaging he could walk into a room mm -hmm. and he was one of those type of people i'm more introverted i don't really when i walk into a room with people i don't know eh, mm -hmm. i'll just be a wallflower sit back here i'm fine mm -hmm. not him he goes right up to people he starts talking he engages them and he's very personable and extremely funny. Mm -hmm. And so um, I guess throughout my life that I had with him, he taught me so much about what love was and what love mm -hmm. is. And, and she was someone who needed to, to learn to oh, have that lesson. Yeah. There, there, there's an there's interesting story before they married this gorgeous little lady, two guys wanted her. <laughs> oh. And you kind of liked the other guy? I did, because I had a history with this guy. I didn't have a history with Bill, but Bill made me wonder. 
there was this wonderment about him. So, uh, like I said, my brother had set us up, and I, you know, made a, I was going to say a fool of myself at this restaurant because I didn't understand what all of it was because I was in the country. Mm -hmm. My food was always chosen for me. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, we, he was just, what was the question? Again? Well, what I was going to bring up, that there were two guys kind of interested in you and oh. Bill. The, tell them what endeared you to Bill, what he told you. That if you love the... <laughs> yeah, I remember. I know exactly what you're saying. Well, this other guy came back in the picture after Bill and I started dating for maybe about a month. And the guy wanted me to marry him. And here I am thinking about it. And I'm like, well, he's not really saved. And mm -hmm. he drinks. And I don't do any of those things. <clears throat> but I, I want to bring you to the point of what made me choose. Um, Bill told me the night before on the phone, he said, listen... Um, I really didn't want to tell you this so soon, but he said, you know, if you think you have a chance with this guy and you really love him, I love you enough to let you go. And so the next morning, I called my dad around 5 o'clock in the morning because I've been turmoil all night long. Mm -hmm. I can't sleep. Do I choose Bill? Do I choose mm -hmm. this other one? I never had that problem. And I'm not, I was just because the other one was really like a male model. He was extremely handsome, whatever. So anyway, I was talking to my dad on the phone. I said, Dad, tell me what to do, because I'm not going to tell you what to do. You're old enough. I said, Dad, you're my father. You're supposed to. <laughs> he said, no. And then I said, but you know what this kind of reminds me of, Dad? And he goes, what? I said, King Solomon, mm -hmm. the two mothers with the baby. Mm -hmm. You know, he knew in his wisdom that the true mother the one who truly loved the baby mm -hmm. was the one who's going to let the baby go. I love you enough to mm -hmm. let you go. I, I, I just, I just love that story. Me. And um, we're running out of time. But I, I would like to also say that Bill was a, devouted, a devout churchman. He was so active in his church. And he, uh, he was a blessing to everybody. And mm -hmm. so as I was thinking about this Father's Day, I thought, you know, step parents so often get a bad rap. Yeah. But this one was absolutely in a class by himself and that whole family still, they would rise up and call him blessed. Yes. And uh, that God gave you and your boys a wonderful, wonderful gift when yes. he gave you Bill. Absolutely. Well, we are just about out of time, um, but stay with us. Got a couple of things to say before we have to say goodbye. Artheline would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. I want to take a second again to remind you of the red letter words of Jesus. We've offered this several times and as long as they last, so that they are going quickly, I would suggest that you uh, order yours. The information is on your screen. You can use the 800 number or the address and we'll be glad to get them out to you. It's a wonderful, wonderful item to have, a wonderful item to give, okay? You know, one of the most crucial problems facing our nation today is the lack of true fatherhood. Sadly, statistics validate this sad commentary. In an effort to elevate the position of women in this culture, the significance of men has been downgraded to about a zero. How can we forget the immortal words of feminist leader Gloria Steinem when she wrote, a woman needs a man like a fish needs a bicycle. Well, perhaps Gloria didn't need a man, but it's well documented that children need a father. And no matter the effort expended, women can't be fathers. The scripture is replete with references of the father and the importance of his role. You know, today some great memories of my dad, Reverend R.A. McClure, pour over my own emotions like a powerful Niagara. Daddy's own father, a circuit-riding preacher, died when Daddy was a teenager. His older brother fought in the First World War, and that left my dad to be the man of the house. 
His mother was a hell-busting prayer warrior, which no doubt set the course for his life. Somehow, he managed to go to Bible college, marry my mom, and become daddy to four of us. He was a pastor, evangelist, district official, and in all of it, an authentic visionary. He was a pioneer in Christian radio, and in the early 1940s, he sent a fleet of Sunday school buses from his church each Sunday morning in an effort to reach even more children for Jesus. He was proud of his musical children and at times purchased instruments when we really couldn't afford it. I have a vivid memory of him taking us to a concert and on the way home announcing, you can be better than that. He taught us to be curious, to reach higher. He prepared us to be adults rather than languish in childhood pursuits. He led us through extremely difficult times, but strangely, I didn't seem to notice. Instinctively, I knew with him at the helm, we would make it. He was fun. He taught us how to live. And he also taught us how to die. When cancer ravaged his body with pain too intense to describe, there was never a word of complaint. Shortly before he died, he told me, I was a farm boy from Northern Missouri and wouldn't have mounted to too much but Jesus saved me, and it's the best thing that ever happened to me. As his life ebbed away, my very brave mom surprised us when she said, let's sing. Daddy's weak, barely audible voice joined her as they stared death in the face, singing, glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. Thank you, Daddy. That unshakable truth continues to march on in the lives of your children, your grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and even your great-great-grandchildren. I bless your memory on this Father's Day and look forward to the time when we're together again. Here's a photo of my dad in his pulpit, ready to preach in that beautiful church he built just a few short years before he died. Happy Father's Day, everyone. If you should miss a Homekeepers program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.